Lesson 7-2, solve equations with variables on both sides. In this lesson, we're going to learn what to do when we see a variable on both sides of the equal sign in an equation. Take a look at your solve and discuss it problem. See if you can set up an expression that represents Jackson's money and Brian's money, and then we're going to set them equal to each other and solve. While I know it's difficult to see here on the screen um, in the video, you should be able to see a clearer picture in your book. So notice in Jackson's cash box that he has a total of $15 plus he has these checks here. If you count up the number of checks he has, there are a total of 14 checks and each check is written for the same amount of money, X. Now looking over at Brian's cash box, okay, Brian has a total of $50 in cash, and he also has some checks written here, again, for the same amount of money, but he has seven checks. Now, since the problem tells us that um, the checks were the same amount of money, we're going to use the variable X in both places to represent that. What we also know is that they collected the same amount of money during the car wash. So whatever is in Jackson's cash box is equal to whatever is in Brian's cash box. Use the clues from the problem to see if you can determine what was the amount of each check, X, and how much money did each of the boys collect? Pause the video while you try to problem solve through this using the clues in the problem and come back and check your answer. Were you able to problem solve to discover that each check must be worth $5? If each check is worth $5, then that means Jackson and Brian each have $85 in their cash box, and that makes a total of $170 collected from the car wash for both boys. Now let's look at example one. Jonah and Lizzie are making smoothies that have the same number of fluid ounces. Jonah uses four containers of yogurt to make his smoothie. Lizzie uses two and one half containers of yogurt to make her smoothie. How many ounces of yogurt, X, are in each container? So you can see here in the picture that we have Jonah and Lizzie's smoothie, their blenders, and it tells us how many ounces of juice are in each of them, and it also tells us about the yogurt. So we know that Jonah used four containers of yogurt while Lizzie used two and one half. So one way to solve this is to take a look at this from a bar diagram. Okay, remember that they have the same number of fluid ounces in each of those smoothies. So the bar diagram is going to show the same number of fluid ounces in those two smoothies. Jonah's smoothie is made up of four containers of yogurt and six ounces of juice. Lizzie's smoothie is made of two and a half containers of yogurt and 12 ounces of juice. We're going to solve this similar to how we did when we learned how to solve equations. We're going to break apart the different pieces into groups to show how they're related to each other. For example, when you look at the amount of yogurt in each of those smoothies, Jonah and Lizzie each contain at least two and one half containers of yogurt. Since Jonah has four containers of yogurt in his smoothie, there's an extra one and one half container here that is not in Lizzie's. Then go to the liquid amounts. Each of their smoothies contain at least six ounces of liquid, but again, Lizzie's contains an extra six ounces of liquid that Jonah didn't have. When you take out or remove those common pieces, then you can take the remaining amount and split it up into equal parts to represent the other amounts that are in each of those smoothies. So for example, since Jonah has one and one half containers of yogurt extra, and Lizzie has six ounces of juice extra, then we can make a comparison to see how much yogurt in ounces 
was equivalent to the ounces of juice in Lizzie's smoothie. Each half ounce of yogurt is equal to two ounces of juice. So what that means is that X, which is the number of contain or ounces of yogurt, should be equal to two bars of the two ounces. So that means that X equals four ounces. That's the amount of yogurt in each container. Another way to solve this without a bar diagram is to use your inverse operations to solve for x. So what we know is that since each of those smoothies contains the same number of ounces, we set those two expressions equal to each other. That's the equal sign right there. Since they're equal to each other, we're going to solve by doing the same thing to both sides to get the variable terms on one side of the equation and then we're going to get the constant terms on the other side of the equation. Now you know how the book loves to do things in a horizontal fashion, and I'm not a fan of that. I like to do things in a vertical fashion. So I'm gonna show you this same equation over here on the side, and I'm gonna solve it vertically. So the first thing that they do is they have subtracted oops, the two and a half X from each side. Now you can do that because you've got two and a half X's here to take away and four X take away two and a half X leaves you with one and one half X. But don't forget you still have six also on that side. What's left on the other side of the equation is the 12. Now you've got a two-step problem where you can remove the constant value, which is the six. And one and one-half x on the left is equal to six on the right. Now you need to take that and turn that mixed number into an improper fraction so that you can solve that by multiplying by its reciprocal. So again, we get there are four ounces of yogurt in each of those containers. Now I'd like for you to try to set up the try it question and solve that on your own. Come back and check your answer when you have it set up and then you'll, you can pause the video again to try to solve it. Okay, let's make sure it's set up correctly first. Pause the video after you know that it's set up correctly and then try to solve it and come back and check your final answer. Okay, first check your equation to see if you set that up correctly. Now I'd like for you to try to solve it. If you don't wanna use the boxes that you see on your page here, that's okay, you can cross those out. And then what I'll do is I'll do it over here on the white space and you can come back and check your answer to see if you did it correctly. Okay, now go ahead and check your work that goes with the try it. I did not use the boxes there. I did use the box only for the final statement to answer the question. But you can see that I took away from both sides the three and one fourth W. So I removed the variable term from the right side and put it over with the like term on the left side. And then I took the eight and I subtracted that from both sides. So what I ended up with was an equation that had my variable terms on the left and my constant terms on the right. So when you're solving these problems, the biggest thing to remember, the key point to remember, is that all the variables need to be on one side of the equal sign and all of the numbers need to be on the other side. Example two is a common problem with commission and salaries. Teresa earns a weekly salary of $925 and a 5% commission on her total sales. So notice that the 5% is written in decimal form and X stands for the amount of sales that she had for the week. Ramon earns a weekly salary of $1,250,
but he only earns a 3% commission on his sales. Again, 3% is written in decimal form and multiplied by X, which represents the number or the amount of the sales for that week. And what we're asked to do is to determine how much the sales should be so that these two salespeople earn the exact same amount of money for the week. The expression that we would use to describe Teresa's sales for the week is 500x plus 925. So that shows us her commission sales right here and her salary, which is the 925. Ramon's expression to describe his sales for the week would be 300x, so that's his commission, plus his salary, which is $1,250. And what we're trying to do is make these two expressions equal to each other. So again, we use our inverse operations to make sure that we combine our like terms on both sides of the equal sign. So the first thing that they have decided to do is to subtract the 300x from both sides. So we're gonna move the variable terms so that they are all on the left-hand side of that equal sign. Then we're going to take and subtract 925 from both sides to move our constant terms to the right side of the equal sign. So our equation now says 200x equals 325. And if you wanna know what this work would look like, I'll do it over here and you can check your work to see if you did it the same way. So here's our work in our vertical fashion, like we're used to solving right here. Okay, and I did go ahead and finish that up. Uh, the last line here is what happens when you need to solve then for x when you get it to a one-step equation, and that is to divide both sides by the two hundredths, and you should get 16,250, meaning Teresa and Ramon each need $16,250 of sales in order to earn the same amount of money for the week. Now I'd like for you to take a look and study example three. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the work looks like in a vertical format, and then I'd like for you to solve the try it at the bottom of the page. First, take a look at the work that goes with example three. So I took their horizontal work here, and I showed you what it looks like over here in our vertical format, okay? Keeping in mind that we did the exact same steps. The first thing we did was we combined our like terms. Then we went ahead and added 25x to both sides. We subtracted 10 from both sides. And then we divided both sides by 60. So after nine weeks, Kelsey and Chris will have the same amount of money in their bank accounts. Now, going back to the uh, step right after we combined like terms, where I added 25x to both sides, why do you think that I would need or want to take the 25x and move it to the right side of the equal sign instead of leaving it on the left side of the equal sign? Any ideas? Well, you might notice that the 25x was initially being subtracted from the 550. And I don't like always to have a negative number in front of the x variable. So the easier thing to do is to add the 25x to both sides. If I would like to move the 35x to the left side of the equal sign, then I could have subtracted 35x from both sides. All that does is it turns my equation around completely. So my x variable and my x term would be on the left side of the equal sign, and my numbers, my constants, would be on the right side. In doing that, I would still end up with x equals 9, but the x term would be on the left, and the 9 would be on the right. Now go ahead and do the work for the try it and come back and check your answer. All right, this try it, this last one, does take up quite a bit of space. Um, so I've shown you how it looks vertically. The first thing that we do right here that you see in my steps is I have combined my like terms that are both y's on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left side of that equal sign. 
In the second step, after I have combined those like terms, then I went ahead and I added the negative set, or I added seven and seven tenths y to the negative seven and seven tenths y on the left side, and I move that y term then over to the right side. So now I have 96 equals 13 and 3 tenths y plus 42 and 80 hundredths. In the third step, I went ahead and subtracted that 42 and 80 hundredths from both sides of the equal sign, and I did that intentionally so that I can move the numbers or the constants all over to the left side of the equal sign because all my variable terms now are on the right side. And then I went ahead and divided both sides by that 13 and 3 tenths in order to isolate the variable and get y by itself. So we know that y has to be equal to 53 and 2 tenths divided by 13 and 3 tenths, which is equal to 4. Now we're going to try some practice problems. You'll have to go to the next video in order to see that work and those answers.